In this video, I'm going to do a quick overview on how the water cooling on my SCAR-16 works, as well as going over a bit of how I made it, just to clear up any confusion on what exactly is going on with it. The first step in setting this up was getting some measurements of the stock heatsink to see what size water block I would be able to use while avoiding covering up any of the mounting holes for both the heatsink itself and for the bottom cover of the laptop. Looking around, I came across the AlphaCool RAM water block that's shown here. I noticed that it matches the measurements that I took pretty closely, and then it also has exposed mounting tabs on the side, where a lot of the others had that covered by the water chamber. Having the mounting tabs on the side of the water block helps for two big reasons. Firstly, it makes sure that there's good mounting pressure between the water block and the heatsink. Mounting pressure plays a big role in how much heat it's able to dissipate, because it gets the component closer to the heatsink. On top of that, because I'm able to cut the bottom case cover to use those tabs to press it in, it eliminates the need for any kind of adhesive which would make this difficult to service later on, where you'd possibly have to deal with trying to disassemble a water block with some residual liquid left over in it. This way, it's able to come off as one unit because you're only using thermal putty as a thermal interface material. Inside the laptop, all that we have happening is that this water block is being pressed into the stock heatsink by the bottom case cover. Because of this, the stock air cooling is still fully functional and it can work as a standalone unit without the external radiator. Because there's no way to see through the bottom case cover without cutting it, and placement's pretty important on this to make sure that it performs as well as it can, I went with the simple approach of using some tape, placing it on top of the heatsink, and then pressing down the case cover to see where it's stuck to. You still want to double check, so I took a few measurements with calipers from the top of the laptop itself to where the heatsink is to make sure that it lined up about where it should. While doing that, I did notice that there are actually four little tabs that come down from the bottom case cover above where the CPU mounting screws are, and realized that I could use that as a guiding for where it should actually be, and it lined up pretty close. While getting ready to start cutting the bottom case cover, I also jumped into Fusion 360 to start designing what would be the new feet for the back of the laptop so that it's not resting on top of the heatsink. Originally, I was going to go with some plain rectangles. I actually printed them out at first, but when they were on the laptop, it just looked like it had high heels. It was pretty goofy. Uh, so going with the asymmetrical lines of the laptop, where it has the ROG on the bottom, I decided to make the feet also asymmetrical to try to fit with the styling of it. After taking the Dremel to the bottom case cover, I put everything on with a little bit of plastic cement, made a small rectangle for a boundary to cover up any rough lines from where it was cut, and we're ready to drop in the water block to get everything together. Now that I have the bottom case cover together, I had some up siren putty laid across the heat pipes. This is going to be here to help heat transfer between the laptop heatsink and the water block. And as you can see here, everything is nicely lined up right over where the CPU and GPU die are. A nice coincidence with this water block is that there's actually a 4mm gap between the bottom cover of the laptop on the inside and the heatsink. And the water block's cold plate is also 4mm. So I'm still leaving some space between these lines just because it is going to squish out and I don't want there to be too much resistance to cause any issues with too much mounting pressure on top of the CPU and GPU die. And that's all there is to it. Just a RAM water block, some thermal putty, and a little bit of help with the bottom case cover for good mounting pressure. I do know some others have tried doing similar things using air coolers or AIO cold plates and using a thermal pad. But I think part of why that isn't as successful is because most thermal pads are still going to be about a half millimeter to a millimeter thick, and that's not going to get it as close as the thermal putty will once it squishes out.